And Le Pivot. Le Pivot. In Glen Hill Farm Colors. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf to a level beginning. They're across the crowd track early and moving up to take over the lead is Austere for a head advantage up on the outside. Dreamfire put into play early. Hard to justify is a bit keen. Racing between horses while angling over. Buku has dropped down toward the rail. Porta Fortuna between horses. Life's an audible three wide. Stuck four wide as she feels pretty with flattery next. In between horses it's lone and out a bit deep as Carla's way. Content is settled while a bit headstrong and in tight for racing room. Content shuffled back. Buttercream Babe works between horses. Le Pebot toward the back of the field. It's a tightly grouped field separated by eight lengths and the run past the opening quarter. They make their way five furlongs from the finish. The leader is now Dreamfire in front three parts of a length. In between horses hard to justify. Second life's an audible three wide third. Patiently handled as austere down toward the inside and fourth at this stage. The opening half mile was 47 and three. From between horses it's Porta Fortuna and out a bit deep she feels pretty. Back from there Carla's way begins to get underway. Down at the rail it's Buku. In between horses is Loam. Then it's a length and a half to Galabran with Flattery dropping back. Buttercream Babe and Le Pivot is next. Content is 14th and last as they run to the top of the stretch. Less than a quarter of a mile to come in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. Dreamfire off the turn with a wall of pursuers. Loose for the drive is Carla's way. In between horses hard to justify. Well, on the inside in Porta Fortuna. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Who do you like here? In between horses hard to justify. Rouse for it for a narrow lead. On the outside and she feels pretty at the rail. Porta Fortuna, hard to justify, turned him away. Challenges on both sides, but hard to justify up to the task. Close then for second. Either she feels pretty or Porta Fortuna. Content rolled late for a minor placing in 134 and two. Hard to justify the 12 horse, the daughter of Justify, fending off all challengers from the inside, from the outside, as she gets this win for Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt. I mean, the pace was pretty swift early on, 22 and change for the opening quarter. They managed to get a little breather around the turn down the backside, but attending the pace most of the way was hard to justify, and hard to justify, it's hard to believe, Chad Brown, a record six win in this race, getting nine to one in here. Unbelievable. Huge effort from this filly this afternoon. And as you say, Simon, right up there and on the pace. We have a photo in for the horses behind. Let's take a look one more time as they turn for home. So Dreamfire taking them as far as she could. Where were some of the other horses that are involved in this photo coming from here, Simon? Well, Porta Fortuna is in behind, Rishi, right? White silk screen cap. Just in behind horses. I was wondering whether she'd get a clean run because she has to switch to the inside of Dreamfire, but she does get a clean run. I thought she feels pretty. She's run really well considering the trip that she's had. Con content is the one making up a lot of ground late on. Carla's way just seemed to run a bit awkward off the bend and struggle, but content was running them down in another few strides. Might have got there. The sheets play. I know you look at the sheets, Christina. They'll probably give She Feels Pretty a de decent number. She ran wide. She lost more than the half a length that she was defeated with ground given up. Uh, and that will be, you know, that's a tough beat for Sherry DeVoe, getting beaten by her former boss and Chad Brown. Post position uh, difficult for both these top two horses. Yep. They both overcame a lot just to be involved in the but top two, top three finishers today. The difference in America, the difference between tactical speed and not having it. The 12, even though breaking outside of the 11, was able to have that tactical speed cross and get over. And the 11, she feels pretty a little slower in the early stages, and that compromised the trip. She was four wide the whole way around. This filly is, is big. She has some size to her. Physically, a very mature-looking daughter of Justify. There she is making her way back. Let's take a look at the replay and see if we can figure out who eventually was second. We know the 11 on the outside is involved in this photo. <laughs> that clears oh. it up. <laughs> <laughs> who was that on the inside? Was, it wasn't, Fortuna, it was yeah. Porta Fortuna. Yeah, I say it's, it's, it's probably up out of it. It's the 11 or the 12 would be my guess. Between the two, <laughs> the mud set. I'm, I'm pretty certain content was full. Well, yeah. Yeah. Content making up quite a bit of ground. The five horse oh, uh, in here. There we go. And they have just posted it. So Never it was Porta Fortuna to finish second today, diving through along the inside. A nice handy ride from Machine Murphy there. She feels pretty after a wide trip, settles for third today. But you'd have to be very proud of that effort as well. Oh, no question. Yeah, uh, no question about it. And Porta Fortuna, great, great effort, Rishi. And the form's holding up. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think she ran as most people thought she would do. She traveled really kindly because she's got that speed. She had every chance, but just couldn't quite get it done over the trip. Um, Connections would be pretty proud of that performance. Um, another winner for Justify.
Simon and Christina. I mean, he is turning into a super sire. Obviously, winner on the dirt, winner now. He's got the, probably two of the best two-year-olds in Europe in City of Troy and Opera Singer. My goodness, he's going to get a lot of attention from the Coolmore team over yep. the next All few years. All over the world talking about these offspring of Justify and already with two winners on the Breeders' Cup program. We were able to go on board with Porta Fortuna today, Asheen Murphy wearing the jockey cam for us. And here they are as they turn for home. So you can see the top two finishers or the uh, top two pace setters right in front of him. That is the 12, I believe, hard to justify, that he is following and just going to try and go ahead and find a seam if he can as they turn for home. Yeah, I mean, I tell you, this is a huge effort from hard to justify, to break from that outside post, attend a pretty quick pace, and then draw off away from it and hold off all challenges. Very good effort. And the, the prep race, the Miss Grio up in New York, that's, that's a race that Chad Brown absolutely uses all the time to come on to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. It's been so good for him. The timing, it's a home game for him back in New York, and, and the setup was perfect. And he alluded to the fact she reminded, this Philly reminded him of New Money Honey back in 2016 who won this race. Great effort. New Money Honey, Rushing Fall, the same equation. It keeps yep. working for Chad Brown here at the Breeders' Cup as he comes home with another one. Hard to justify for Wise Racing. Chad Brown teaming up with Flavian Pratt for this victory. We do have prices in from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. Let's take a look. I thought looking at that jockey came, it was interesting. Asheen thought about going outside and she feels pretty beat him to that spot and then had to head inside. Yeah, he you could tell coming into he the straight, right, he's thinking, he? well, I mean, we're thinking what he's thinking. Maybe he always knew what he wanted to do, but from that, those pictures, you can feel the the, the dilemma he's going that's going through his mind. Shall I try and ease my way out there? But then John Velasquez holds him in. He's got to go down to the rail. She's tried really hard, hasn't she? But just quite not good enough. $20.20 back if you had hard to justify on top in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. We'll move ahead and take a look at the odds for our next race on the program. This is the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by the TAA. We'll go a mile and a 16th back on the main track. Do note a couple of scratches in this field, both the one, the wine steward, and the five at Coroneo will not compete early on in the wagering. Locked is the favorite. For Todd Pletcher and Jose Ortiz. He's sitting on the board right now at five to two. Yeah, I mean, this is, I thought, one of the most competitive juvenile races that we've seen in many years, Christina. You've got all the major players with legitimate horses that are below six to one. Tough race. Todd Pletcher, Bob Baffert, we have a good group Brad Cox. in here. Brad Cox all competing here this afternoon. Breeders' Cup Juvenile is coming up next in 31 minutes. Two-day daily double. Heat raise both sides, 30 minutes away at 4 o'clock. 